Welcome back. Let's talk about regular expressions. But before we get into that, let's look at the story so far. Or really, where we are and where we're going to go. We, we talked about finite state machines. Then we're going to talk about regular expressions right now. And then that leads us into formal grammars. So these are kind of increasingly uh, harder, I guess, to say. To understand, so um, right now, so we've just done FF, FSMs, and now we're going to do regex, regex, and that hopefully will make formal grammars a little bit easier to understand. All right. So a regular expression is a pattern that's used to typically accept strings of a certain format, but the regexes can also be used for um, to generate strings of a certain pattern. But typically, we use them as acceptors. The most common uh, case, I guess, is in uh, Windows, for example, like if I'm trying to find all my homework files, but I don't remember, let's say, what number it is, I might do homework star dot uh, PDF. Okay, and this will find homework one dot PDF and homework two dot PDF and homework 42 dot PDF. It'll find all of those where the star is a wild card, that, card that here that matches anything. That's in this syntax, the syntax for file searches in, in Windows. Now, we're going to use a slightly different syntax, but conceptually it's kind of the same thing. Okay, but the way that this thing works is this is a, a, a pattern, and this is fed into an algorithm. Okay, and that algorithm generates a state table. And that state table is used as input into a finite state machine. All right, so basically what we're saying is that for every regular expression, there is an equivalent finite state machine and vice versa. So these are regular expressions and finite state machines are two, really two ways to understand kind of the same thing, all right? Okay, so um, that's pretty much what this paragraph here says that you can read at your leisure. So the way this works is we have an alphabet a with certain reserved symbols in it and then we have these other uh, these other special symbols that are used and we combine these to create a patterns so these are the symbols that that we can use in addition to our alphabet um, these are listed in order of precedence so grouping has the highest precedence just like in regular algebra you always do what's in the parentheses first then the next thing you do is the star operator which indicates repetition so you can choose, you know, whatever this star operator is next to, you can choose that thing zero or more times. All right, and then there's concatenation. Concatenation is, is just when you want to list two symbols as being next to each other, like A and B. And typically we would, we would omit this operator and just use juxtaposition, that is just put the symbols next to each other like that. But if you want to be more explicit, you could use the dot operator. Okay, then we have choice. This allows you to choose between two things, one or the other, but not both, so it's, so it's exclusive or. And then we have lambda, symbol lambda, which is a way to indicate null strings. So the best way to understand this is just get into some, uh, some examples here. So let's say we have the alphabet A, B, and then we have our, our little symbols here. So we can construct very various regular expressions. So just... Uh, generating or creating this pattern ABA, this will match strings of the form ABA. So it will only match ABA and that's it. So if you were looking for a file and you knew the name, then you might you would use this. But let's say you, 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 you're not sure if the file is named AB or maybe it's named BA. I'm using the examples of searching for files in Windows, but lots of tools, lots of software tools, some, some uh, languages have regular expressions built into them. But anyway, you would use the choice operator here. So this pattern here would, would uh, match the string AB or the string BA. Okay, this thing here, the star operator applied to B means that we can choose as many Bs as we want. We could choose zero Bs, which would be lambda, or we could choose one B, which would be B, or we could choose two Bs, which would be B, B, and we could choose three B, B, three Bs, and B, 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 all the way out to infinity. Um, okay, this thing here means that we could choose A or B, 
zero or more times. And since A or B is our entire language, basically we can generate any string that's possible to create in the language because we do what's inside the parentheses zero or more times. So we, we could just repeatedly choose an A or a B as many times as we want. So, so we could spell anything, right? You could choose an A and then you could do it again and choose a B and you could do it again and choose another B. All right, so this is just a convenient way to indicate really any string. All right, so let's get into some little more complicated examples here. Uh, so here's a string, A, B, B, A, and here's a regex, A, B, star, and then quantity A or B, or uh, the choice between A or B. Okay, so B, apply uh, that is the star applies just to B, because uh, it, uh, we, don't, we don't have any parentheses there. So it just applies just to B. If we wanted it to apply to A and B, we'd have to put parentheses around A and B because of the precedence rules. So uh, to answer this question, Really what we're asking is can you use this pattern to generate this string? Can we use this pattern here to generate this string here? So we have to have an A because that's explicitly written down there. So there's an A Okay, then we have B star so we could choose B twice and that would give us our two B's here And then we have to choose one of these guys we could choose the A and that would give us the last A on here So yeah, we can generate this string using this regex or to say it another way, this regex will accept this string. So we can use regexes as string generators if we want, or we could use them as uh, string acceptors. A fine distinction, but anyway. Um, so um, how about this guy? Find all strings over this alphabet which start with AB. This regex will do that. So you have list the AB explicitly because that's what we're trying to screen for, so to speak. Um, strings that start with AB. So list AB explicitly. And then we'll use our little trick here, this, uh, this, uh, this pattern that matches anything here. Just throw that on the end. So this will guarantee that we have a string with AB and then we can generate anything we want to following that. Okay, so this, this pattern will match uh, all strings which start with AB. Okay, what about this guy here? Uh, does A, B, A, A, B, A, B, B, A, does that match this regex? So let's see if we can generate this string using this regex. So we have this, um, this choice that we can do zero or more times. And so notice that everything's in little pairs of, of letters here. So here we have AA and BB. This guy starts with AB. So none of these are going to work. But we're cool because we have a star here, which means we can choose this this stuff in here zero times. So, because, you know, it's not going to match AB. Neither of these is going to match AB. So choose this zero times. Okay. Then we got to do this stuff in here, stuff in the outer parentheses. We have to do all of this. So... Uh, the first parentheses in here, uh, we can choose AB, and that'll take care of this A, this AB in the in the string. So choose AB and get rid of that. Then over here, see we have a we have an AA we need, and we're not going to get it from here, right? So we have to get it from this this grouping here. So we'll do this grouping uh, once and choose the AA. That gives us this AA. Okay, now we need a BA, and we're not going to get it from here. So we have to go over here. And we can choose, um, we can choose this BA, and that gives us this. We choose this BA right here, this guy. That'll give us this BA here. Okay, but then we're done, and we still have BBA. So, you know, no, it doesn't match. There's no way for this for this pattern to ma um, to match this particular string. What about? Um, this is the same pattern. Does it match this string? Well, uh, same thing. So we need an AA right off the bat. Um, we'd have to choose it from, from this first grouping because this star indicates zero or, zero or more. We could skip it, but if we skipped it, then the string would start with either AB or BA. So we can't skip it. 
we, we need this guy because we need an AA. So we do AA, right? We've got AA, and then we need another AA, so we can do this again, because we star means as many times as we want. So we do it twice to get AA and AA, and then we have to move on to this guy to get an AB. And uh, we can only do this guy once. There's no star or anything, which means you just do this whole thing one time. We choose one of these guys one time. And that'll give us AB, and then we move on to this guy, and we need an AB, we're not going to get it from this group, so we choose it zero times. And we move on to this guy, and we get our AB. But then we're left with an AA, so no, we can't do it. All right? That's kind of how you do these things. So let's look at some more notation before we go on. So you got to be careful if you've learned regular math, algebra, uh, exponents are a sticky point. So we have this notation A to the two, which just means two A's, all right? Which sort of jives with regular algebra, right? Like A squared means A times A, which sort of looks like regular algebra. So far, we're okay. It shouldn't like freak you out. Um, even this is okay, right? B four means four B's, which looks like regular algebra. B times B times B times B looks okay, etc. But careful, because when you do uh, A, B, Two, what that really means is, um, is A, B, A, B. But you got to be careful because in regular algebra, you can factor in the two, right, and get this A2, B2, but that's not the same thing in this notation. The A2, B2 is means two A's and two B's, which if you were multiplying, that'd be fine because mul multiplication is commutative, right? You can do it in any order, but we're not doing multiplication here. So uh, be careful there, all right? The order matters, order matters. Um, likewise, this notation would be meaning two A's and two uh, and three A's, which is A to the five, which is fine because they're all A's. But anyway, just be careful because order does matter here. So just slow down when you're doing these, when you're messing with this notation, all right? We can do a couple more examples now. Um, so here's our alphabet, A, B, same alphabet. What if we wanted to generate all strings that begin with A and end with B? Well, we'd explicitly list an A at the front and then explicitly list a B at, at the back. That, indicate, that satisfies our condition here. And then we've got this thing in the middle, the A or B quantity star, which, remember from before, that will generate any string. Okay, so it starts with A, ends with B, and anything you want is in the middle. So this is all strings that have this uh, A at the beginning and, and B at the end. What about all strings of even length? And we have to be careful about what we mean by even. Here we're going to include the null string to be, to be even. Then um, use the star to indicate zero or more, because you could do it zero times, that would be the null string. And you could, if you did it one time, then you're guaranteed to generate one letter here and then one letter here. It's two letters. And then if you did it again, you're guaranteed to generate another two letters. It's four letters. So it's going to be even. It's going to be two, four, six, eight. Every time you, every time you, uh, you, you uh, apply the star, every time you do a, uh, a selection from the, in the entire group, you're going to choose this one of these guys and one of these guys. So that'll be even length. Um, what if you wanted at least one A? Well, then just throw the A in there explicitly and then say anything can be in front. That's this A or B star pattern. And then anything can be at the back, A or uh, B star. Uh, there's other solutions to this, but this is just one, one regex, regex that will satisfy this condition. Uh, and there's a corresponding finite state machine for this regex. Now there's other there's other regexes that will also solve the same problem, and they would have another finite state machine. Okay, so there's multiple solutions, but but um, any regex pattern will have an FSM associated with it. But there's multiple there can be multiple regexes for any problem. Okay, what about all strings with at least two A's? Well. This isn't a particularly elegant solution, but it will work. You know, you want an A, 
and then we want another A. So we list explicitly the A's. Then uh, anything, 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 you know, anything at the front, anything in the middle, anything at the end. So you could write, you could create any strings you want and you're guaranteed to have at least these two A's. What if you want strings that consist of B's only, but with an optional single leading A? Okay, so just, just all B's, all B's, but you can have one A in front. So you use this parenthesis in the front. Here's where we need lambda, because in this first set of parentheses, you can uh, choose either A or lambda. So you can you choose A or nothing. Remember, lambda indicates the null string. So this is uh, lambda is used here to indicate uh, that uh, you know you don't have to have the A. You could just have nothing. All right. Then um, we want strings of B's, so we want at least one B. So there's a B listed explicitly to guarantee that it's a string of at least one B. Otherwise, it would just be a string. If you didn't have this B here, because this, this B star is zero or more Bs, then it's possible to just have no Bs, and you could just choose an A, and then that, that's not a string of, of Bs. I hope you followed that. So anyway, this will work. So you could, you could choose the A out front, in this parenthesis, and then you have one B to guarantee that it's a string of at least one B, and then you can throw on as many Bs as you want after this B star, so zero or more Bs after that. What about, uh, oh, uh, what if you were trying to find just these strings? Well, simple solution would be just explicitly list those four strings and, and then have the choice operator between them. It might be a more elegant solution than this, but this will work. So that's, uh, you know, that's it. Um, there's not a super whole lot to these things. They just take a little bit of practice. And um, this is a prelude to, uh, the reason we're doing this is because it's a prelude to, uh, to formal grammars, right? So there's a homework. Uh, go do that. And... Uh, then come watch the, uh, the formal grammar stuff. All right. Hope this was helpful. See you next time. Bye.